aspect of storyality. It's like Cliff's Notes for fighting games. Today, we're going to focus on Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection. Dark Resurrection is an updated version of Tekken 5 with some extra characters, and since this series of storyality is all about character stories, why wouldn't we do the version with more characters? At the end of the King of Iron Fist Tournament 4, Heihachi defeated his resurrected son Kazuha and led him to a temple where his grandson Jen was being held. Heihachi's plan was to let the two battle it out and then steal the devil gene from the weakened victor. Unfortunately, Jen was stronger than he thought, beat both of them up, and got away, with Kazuha making his escape shortly thereafter. Before Heihachi could escape, though, a squad of Jack-4 robots burst in and self-destructed, seemingly killing Heihachi. The explosion also wakes up Jinpachi Mishima, Heihachi's father, who for some reason had been chained up in a deep sleep for the last 50 years underneath the temple. He proceeds to take command of the Mishima Zayabatsu and announces the Tekken 5 tournament. But as we all suspected, Heihachi isn't dead, and he vows to break the neck of whoever started this ridiculous tournament. Our returning characters are Anna Williams, our quote-unquote evil assassin sister. Her life has been quite boring since the disappearance of her sister Nina. Then one day Nina calls her, and the two decide to meet and end up having an epic gun battle lasting several days. When both sides fail to win, they decide to settle things in the new Tekken tournament. Bake Do San. Apparently Bake was not killed by Ogre prior to Tekken 3, but was merely in a coma. He decides to enter the tournament to test the skills of his former student, Huareng, Bruce Irvin. Bruce has been absent for the last two games. He was the guy who killed Super Cop Lei Walloon's partner and survived two plane crashes. He had done some work for Casua, but has been sitting around bored for a while now, so he joins the tournament for a chance to just have some fun. Brian Fury, our cyborg pal who's fun to be with. After getting upgraded by his creator's rival, Dr. Boskanovich, Brian went on a rampage killing several people in Dr. Boskanovich's lab. He then joined the tournament to test out his new upgrades. Christy Montero and Eddie Gordo basically have the same story. Christy learns that her grandfather, who was Eddie's teacher, is finally being released from prison but dying of a mysterious illness. She joins the tournament hoping that if she wins, she'll get control of the Mishima Zayabatsu and be able to use their resources to cure her grandfather. Craig Marduk Once an undefeated Veiled Tudo fighter, but he lost to King in the previous tournament. He's trained day and night since, becoming stronger than ever before, so that he can take down King in the next tournament. Yan Ryu, who is totally not E. Honda, has fallen in love with Julia Chang, because he used to be in love with her mother, which isn't creepy at all. He joins the tournament hoping that he can get the reforestation data she was after in the previous game, because then she'd have to love him. Hey, Hachi Mishima. We mostly covered his story in the intro. He wants control of his company back. Warang. Huareng was taken into custody for deserting the South Korean military to participate in the last tournament. Months later, he was discharged from military service and decided to attend the fifth tournament to finally face down his rival Jin, Jack-5. Jane, the little girl from previous games, built the new Jack-5 and enters him in the tournament, hoping that with his victory, she can find the personality data and memories of the previous Jacks and get her childhood friend back, Jen Kazama. Feeling partially responsible for awakening Jinpachi and still struggling to control his devil gene, Jin enters the tournament to end Jinpachi's evil reign. Julia Chang. After failing to get the reforestation data she needed in the previous game to save her village, she enters the new tournament to try again. Kazuha Mishima. We also covered Kazuha a bit in the beginning. He actually threw a weakened Heihachi at the Jack robots so that he could make his escape. He joins the fifth tournament to find out the identity of the mysterious person who's running it. King 2 After beating Marduk in the previous tournament, Marduk went around wearing a black jaguar mask as a parody of the original Armor King, who he killed. King joins the tournament to fight Marduk and defend his former master's honor. Kuma 2 The Return of the Son of the Bear Kuma was finally able to avenge his father by defeating Paul Phoenix in the previous tournament. However, 
Believing his master Heihachi to be dead, Kuma joins Tekken 5 to claim ownership of the Mishima Zayabatsu in his master's memory. Li Chaolen's story is fairly simple. Being Heihachi's adopted son, he believes the Mishima Zayabatsu belongs to him. He joins the tournament to take back what is rightfully his. Li Wo Long, the super cop, is following a case of multiple attacks at dojos. Believing the next attack will be at the Tekken 5 tournament, he joins to find the culprit, Ling Jiayu. When our stereotypical Japanese schoolgirl heard about the supposed death of her mentor Heihachi, she became desperate for a way to go back in time and save him. A brilliant young inventor claimed that he could make a time machine but would need lots of money to do it. Ling joins the tournament to raise the cash for her time travel adventures. Martial Law After failing to win the last tournament, Law was forced to take a job as a dishwasher. Then his wife contacts him to say that his son Forrest had been in an accident involving Paul Phoenix's bike. Law joins the tournament so he can pay for his son's medical bills. Mukujin. Since the defeat of Ogre in Tekken 3, the wooden practice dummy has been in a museum. But with the great evil of Jinpachi in the land, Mukujin finds himself brought to life once more. Nina Williams, our amnesiac assassin sister. Meeting her sister face to face in combat finally restores all her memories. And, as mentioned in Anna's story, they decide to settle this once and for all in the new tournament. Panda. Schoolgirl Ling's pet panda joins the tournament because Ling asked her for help. That's all the reason she needs. Paul Phoenix. After being beat by Kuma in the previous tournament, Paul decides to rededicate himself to becoming the world's greatest fighter, which is pretty much his story for every single game. So he joins the fifth tournament to try out his skills. Steve Fox. Nina's coma son Steve was having a hard time getting back into boxing. All of the large tournaments kept getting cancelled due to outbreaks of war. Just go with it, it's Tekken. So he joins the tournament to make some money. Wang Jinrai, a friend of Jinpachi's from long ago. Wang receives a personal invitation to the tournament from his friend, who he long believed was dead. Yoshi Mitsu, the Robin Hood Ninja. He was originally responsible for bringing Brian Fury to Dr. Boskinovich. When Brian destroyed the lab, Yoshimitsu joined the tournament to track him down. And now we get our new characters. Asuka Kazuma, a tomboyish fighter, trained in fighting by her father since she was a child. One day, her father was beaten up and sent to the hospital. The police say that the perpetrator was likely to enter the tournament, which sounds like lousy police work to me, but Asuka joins the tournament to find the person responsible. Thing Wei. Thing is a fierce and ruthless fighter searching the world for the secret of the God Fist Scrolls. His hunt for these scrolls led him to committing the crimes that Super Cop Wu Long was investigating and beating up Asuka's father. Jinpachi Mishima, who is the only unlockable character in this game, you unlock him by beating arcade mode. He is also the winner of the Greatest Beard Award. Jinpachi was once an honorable man, before he was taken over by a vengeful spirit of great power. He organizes the tournament in hopes that someone will defeat him and free him from the monster he's become, Raven. I know what you're thinking, but no, that's not Blade. Raven is a gifted international spy. He joined the tournament to find out who was behind it. Everything else about him is a mystery. Roger Jr. Remember Roger, the boxing kangaroo from Tekken 2? He's his son. Roger Jr. is still pretty young, so he's still in his mother's pouch. He joins the tournament to find out what happened to his father who has been missing for years. Armor King 2. The first Armor King was killed by Marduk before Tekken 4. Nobody knows who the new wearer of the mask is. Not even Marduk or King. Emily de Rockfort, also known as Lily. Another schoolgirl, but a rich one without a panda. Her father hates violence, but Lily loved fighting, so she learned in secret. And when she had the opportunity to take control of the Mishima Zayabatsu, the company her father hated most of all, she had to take the chance. Sergei Dragunov is a secret Russian operative. He's given a clandestine mission which requires him to join the tournament for reasons we do not know. It's a lot of characters. And now let's get to the endings. In Anna Williams' ending, both sisters are offered a chance to be in the movie together, but they can't stop themselves from trying to kill each other even when it's meant to be pretend. It looks like Nina wins, but Anna has secretly sabotaged her sister's costume so all her clothes fall off on camera. Womp womp. Fake Do San's ending shows Bake stopping Huarang in the middle of a street fight so he can drag his student away and teach him some discipline. 
Bruce Irvin's ending shows him defending a small boy trying to learn boxing when the boy is attacked by three thugs. Brian Fury's ending shows Brian and Yoshimitsu in a fight to the death, which Brian wins. Christy Montero and Eddie Gordo's ending shows the two of them waiting on the result for grandfather surgery, and then all three of them practicing fighting together when he's cured. Craig Marduk shows that winning the tournament wasn't enough for Craig. He finds himself in need of even more fighting. Gen Ryu's ending shows that he gives Julia the data, but she disappears before he can confess his creepy love to her. Eihachi Mishima's ending shows that he has strapped Jimpachi, Kazuha, and Jen to a rocket about to be launched into space. Eihachi has a good laugh as they go up. Huarang's ending shows Huarang about to get into a fight with Devil Jen. Jack 5 shows Jane installing the programs, but then Jack 5 goes berserk. Luckily, his memories kick in right before he kills her, and the two are finally reunited. Despite not being a separate character, Devil Jin does have a separate ending if you beat the game with him. He absorbs Jinpachi's power and becomes an unstoppable force of evil. This is different from regular Jin's ending, which we'll address later. Julia Chang's ending shows that after lots of work and many failures, she is finally able to get the reforestation data to work, and she will one day grow a forest in the Arizona desert. Kazuo Mishima shows him having a brief moment of introspection about killing his grandfather before he goes ahead and does it and laughs. King 2's ending show that King and Marduk have buried the hatchet and decided to become a tag team wrestling powerhouse. Kuma 2's ending is actually a pretty cute little funny thing. Kuma is now in charge of the company. When Heihachi arrives to take control back, Kuma drops him down a trap door. Lee Chowlin in the background supports him. Heihachi then climbs out and drops Kuma down another trapdoor. Lee Chowlin in the background supports him. Speaking of Lee, his ending shows him relaxing at his mansion in the Bahamas, and we see that Heihachi is now serving as his personal butler because of an explosive bow tie around his neck. Lei Wu Long apprehends a criminal on top of a moving bus before getting hit by a low hanging sign. Ling's ending actually shows her getting her time machine. She tries to go back in time to prevent Heihachi from ever throwing Kazuha off the cliff in the first place. But she can't handle the time machine too well and actually rams into Heihachi, forcing him to drop his son and almost fall off the cliff himself. And the future refused to change. Martial Law's ending shows that after paying the medical bills, Law was approached by Paul Phoenix about the damage Law's son did to his bike. The two decide to fight it out. Mukujin's ending shows that with the defeat of Jinpachi, Mukujin returns to his lifeless state. Nina Williams' ending shows Nina fighting her sister on the movie set and winning. She then walks away and blows up the set behind her, dealing with her sister for good. Panda's ending is a parody of Kuma's ending from earlier. She's seen dropping Kuma down the trapdoor when he comes to profess his love to her. Ling then comes in and out of curiosity pushes a button on Panda's desk, dropping her down the trapdoor. As each person falls down a trapdoor, Lee Chow Lin in the background gives him a thumbs up. Paul Phoenix's ending is probably the weirdest in the entire Tekken franchise. It shows him on a space station, preparing to fight aliens, and then a massive alien fleet arrives. Steve Fox's ending shows that Steve is sharing the victory money with Paul and Marshall Law, but Steve doesn't really want his share, so he just leaves them with the money. Shortly thereafter, we learn that the Mishima Zayabatsu put bombs in the cases of money, killing Paul and Law, much to Steve's surprise. Wang Jin Rai's ending shows Wang defeating Jinpachi. The two then have a tearful farewell before Jinpachi fades to dust. Yoshimitsu's ending shows him and Brian Fury engaged in a heating battle, but this time Yoshimitsu wins. Asuki Kazuma's ending shows her beating up Jinpachi and then finding a half-transformed Jin on the battlefield. For some reason, her physical touch removes all evidence of the devil gene within him. And then, there's some anime slapstick. 
Ping Wei's ending shows him finally finding the God Fist Scrolls. Ping is then able to use their power to destroy a mountain in a single punch. Jinpachi's ending shows him lamenting that nobody can defeat him as he grows ever more demonic. Raven's ending shows him calling into headquarters after beating Jinpachi to report his mission is complete, mysterious to the last. Roger Jr.'s ending shows him finally finding his father living in the lap of luxury. Roger Jr. is so angry about this that he uppercuts his dad through the ceiling. Armor King 2's ending shows King trying to find out the new Armor King's identity, but not succeeding. Lily's ending shows her and her butler, who is playable in Tekken Tag Tournament 2, by the way, delighting over their victory, oblivious to the fact that the collapse of the Mishima Zaibatsu will actually ruin her father's business. Sergei's ending shows that he has captured Devil Jin and is performing experiments on him. And our canon ending again is Jin Kazuma, who after defeating Jinpachi takes control of the Mishima Zayabatsu. What will Jin do with control of the Mishima Zayabatsu? Who is Raven? And will Roger ever come back down after being uppercut? I guess we'll find out in the next game. I'll see you guys there.